Good day everyone and welcome to our review for board exam. We are doing psychological assessment for today and we have 15 questions for this session. Ready ka na ba? Let's start! Psychological assessment review questions. Number one, appraisal can be defined as A. The process of assessing or estimating attributes B. Testing which is always performed in a group setting C. Testing which is always performed on a single individual or letter D. A, pap a paper and pencil measurement of assessment attributes Number two, a test can be defined as a systematic method of measuring a sample of behavior. Test format refers to the way items are presented. The format of an essay test is considered a or an blank format. Is it a subjective, b objective, c very precise, or d concise. Number three, the BLEP or B-L-E-P-P -P is A or an blank test because the scoring procedure is specific. Is it A, subjective, B, objective, C, projective, or D, subtest. Number four, a short answer test is A or an blank test. Is it A, objective, B, culture-free, C, forced choice, or D, free choice? Number five, the blep is A or an blank test. Is it A, free choice, B, forced choice, C, Projective or D. Intelligence. Number six. The blank index indicates the percentage of individuals who answered each item correctly. Is it A. Difficulty? B. Critical? C. Intelligence? Or D. Personal? Number seven. Short answer test and projective measures utilize free response items. The civil service exam and college entrance exam uses forced choice or so-called blank items. Is it A, vague, B, subjective, C, recognition, or D, numerical? Number eight, a true or false test has blank recognition items. Is it A. Similar? B. Free choice? C. Dichotomous? Or D. No? Number 9. A test format could be normative or ipsative. In the normative format, letter A, each item depends on the item before it. B. Each item depends on the items after it. Or C, the client must possess an IQ within the normal range. Or D, each item is independent of all other items. Number 10, a client who takes a normative test. Letter A, cannot legitimately be compared to others who have taken the test. B, can legitimately be compared to others who have taken the test. C. Could not have taken an IQ test. Or D. Could not have taken a personality test. Number 11. In an ipsative measure, the person taking the test must compare items to one another. The result is that A. An ipsative Measure cannot be utilized for career guidance. B. You cannot legitimately compare two or more people 
who have taken an ipsative test. C. An ipsative measure is never valid. Or D. An ipsative measure is never reliable. Number 12. Tests are often classified as speed test versus power test. A time typing test used to hire secretaries would be letter A, a power test. B, neither a speed test nor a power test. C, a speed test. Or D, a fine example of an ipsative measure. Number 13. A counseling test consists of 304 response items. The person taking the test can take as long as he or she wants to answer the question. Letter A. This is most likely a projective measure. B. This is most likely a speed test. C. This is most likely a power test. Or D. This is most likely an invalid measure. Number 13. An achievement test measures maximum performance, while a personality test or inventory measure A. Typical performance B. Minimum performance C. Unconscious traits or D. Self-esteem by always relying on a Q-sort design And number 15 In a spiral test A. The items get progressively easier. B. The difficulty of the items remain constant. Letter C. The client must answer each question in a specified period of time. Or D. The items get progressively more difficult. And now, let's proceed to answers and explanation. Number 1. An appraisal can be defined as, and the answer is letter A, the process of assessing or estimating attributes. Appraisal is a broad term, which includes merely testing clients. Appraisal could include a survey, observation, or even clinical interviews. So choices B, C, and D are too limited. A test is simply an instrument which measures a given sample of behavior. When we use the term measure, it merely connotes that a number or score has been assigned to the person's attribute or performance. Number two, a test can be defined as a systematic method of measuring a sample of behavior. Test format refers to the way test items are presented. The format of an essay test is considered A or an blank format. And the answer is letter A, subjective. A subjective paradigm relies mainly on the scorer's opinion. If the rater knows the test taker's attribute, the rater's personal bias can significantly impact upon the rating. For example, an attractive examinee or an individual of some race might be given a higher rating. This is what we call as halo effect. In job setting, peer generally rate their colleagues higher than do their supervisor. In an objective test or choice B, the rater's judgment plays little or no part in the scoring process. Number three, the BLEP, B-L-E-P-P, -P, is a or an blank test because the scoring procedure is specific. And the answer is letter B, objective. Since the BLEP uses a A, B, or C alternative format, the raters or subjective feelings and thoughts would not be an issue. Next number, number four. A short answer test is a blank test. And the answer here is letter D, pre-choice. Some exam will call this pre-response or a free response format. In any case, the salient point is that the person taking the test can respond 
in any manner he or she chooses. Although pre-choice response patterns can yield more information, they often take more time to score and increase subjectivity. Like, there is more than once or there is more than one correct answer. Although testing is often controversial, school now employs psycho-educational tests more than at any time in history. Next number, number five. The blep is A or an blank test. And the answer is forced choice, letter B. Forced choice are sometimes known as recognition items. On some tests, this format is used to control for the social desirability phenomenon, which asserts that a person puts the answer he or she feels is socially acceptable. Like, for example, uh, the test provides alternatives that are all equal in terms of social desirability. In the MMPI-2, or Minnesota Multiphasic Inventory, for example, it uses forced choice to create a lie scale composed of human frailties that we all possess. This scale, therefore, ferrets out those individuals who try to make themselves look good, like the way they believe they should be. And next number, number six, the blank index indicate the percentage of an individual who answered each item correctly. And the answer is letter A, difficulty. The higher the number of people who answer a question correctly, the easier the item is and vice versa. A 0.5 difficulty index, also called difficulty value, would suggest that 50% of those tested answered the questions correctly, while 50% did not. Most theories agree that a good measure provides a wide range of items that even a poor performer can answer correctly. Number seven, Short answer test and projective measure utilize free response items. The civil service exam and the college entrance exam uses forced choice or so-called blank items. And the answer is letter C, recognition. Recognition items give the examinee two or more alternative. Next number, a true or false test has blank recognition items. And the answer is dichotomous. Dichotomy simply means that you are presented with two opposing choices, and this explains why choice A is definitely incorrect. When a test gives the person taking exam three or more forced choices like the civil service exam and the college entrance exam, the psychometrician calls it a multi-point item. So choice B describes a situation in which the examinee can respond in any way he or she chooses. Number nine, a test format could be normative or ipsative. In the normative format, the answer is letter D. Each item is independent of all other items. Ipsative measures compare traits within the same individual. They do not compare a person to other person who took the instrument, like the Cooder Occupational Interest Survey, which is now called the Cooder Career Search, with person match, is one such example. The Ipsative test allows the person being tested to compare items. Number 10, a client who takes a normative test the answer is letter B can legitimately be compared to others who have taken the test. First, forget about choice A. It's ipsative. Technically, a normative interpretation is one in which the individual score is evaluated by comparing it to others who took the same test. A percentile rank is an excellent example. Say, your client score an 82 on a nationally normed test. On this score, corresponds to the percentile rank of 60. This tells you that 
of the individuals who took the test scored 82 or less. Number 11. In an ipsative measure, the person taking the test must compare items to one another. The result is that. The answer is letter B. You cannot legitimately compare two or more people who have taken an ipsative test. Since the ipsative measure does not reveal absolute strength, comparing one person's score to another is relatively meaningless. The person is measured in response to his or her own standard of behavior. The ipsative measure points. It points out the highs and lows that exist within a single individual. Hence, when a colleague tells you that Mr. Edwards' anxiety is improving, she has given you an ipsative description. This description, however, would not lend itself to comparing Mr. Edwards' anxiety to Mrs. Cruz's. Number 12. Tests are often classified as speed test versus power test. A time typing test used to hire secretaries would be? The answer is letter C, a speed test. In terms of difficulty, a speed test is really intended to be fairly easy. The difficulty is induced by the time limitations and not the difficulty of the task or the questions themselves. Okay? Try giving your secretary a time keyboard test and give him or her three hours to complete it and you'll see that he or she can do it well. A good time or speed test is purposely set up so that nobody finishes it. A power test like choice C, choice A, is designed to evaluate the level of mastery without a time limit. A time test is really a type of speed test. But a high percentage of the test takers complete it and it is usually more difficult and has a time limit. Number 13. A counseling test consists of 300 forced response items. The person taking the test can now take as long as he or she wants to answer the question. So the answer here is letter C. This is most likely a power test. Like the speed test, it will ideally be designed so that nobody receives a perfect score. Choice A, projective measure, stands incorrect since the projective tests rely on free response format. And number 14, an achievement test measures maximum performance while a personality test or interest inventory measures. And the answer is letter A, typical performance. Interest inventories are popular with career counselors because such measures focus on what the client likes or dislikes. The strong interest inventory is an excellent example. So choice D, the Q sort often used to investigate personality traits, involves a procedure in which an individual is given cards with statement and asked to place them in piles of most like me or least like me. Then the subject compiles them to create the ideal self. The ideal self can then be compared to his or her current perception in order to assess self-esteem. And number 15. In a spiral test, the answer is letter D. The items get progressively more difficult. Just remember that a spiral st staircase, it seems to get more difficult to climb as you walk up higher. And that's the end of our drill for today. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for updates on our drill. Keep safe and have a nice day.